Today we're going to be focusing on significant figures or significant digits, depending on what term your teacher prefers to use. Now this is actually a pretty easy concept, but something that a lot of students forget when they are going through and doing their calculations in a chemistry class. So make sure we pay attention, make sure we focus, because again, this is an easy concept, but we want to make sure that we get into the habit of utilizing significant figures and digits throughout the school year. So hopefully by the end of this video you will be able to determine the number of significant figures in any given number and then correctly use significant figures when multiplying or dividing numbers. I'm also going to throw in some additional information about adding and subtracting numbers. We don't typically use those very often in a chemistry classroom, or at least in my chemistry classroom, but I'll still want to make sure that you are aware of those rules. And again, your key vocabulary term here is the term significant figures. And you're just going to find out which figures will be significant here in just a moment. So anytime we measure something, there's always a degree of uncertainty in terms of the accuracy of which we measure. And that's when we use significant digits or significant figures when we are measuring something. So when we measure a something, when we measure something using a tool, we always want to estimate that last digit. That is, we always want to go one decimal point beyond what the tool can most accurately measure. Now, that's going to depend on what type of tool that you're using. So if we look at the example provided in the picture, this particular ruler measures in centimeters. And the most accurate we can measure is to the tenths place. As you can see in between, say, 29 and 30, there are markings in there that measure to the tenths place. Well, to write down an accurate measurement, we always go one decimal point beyond that. So if we see the object here, it's just slightly beyond 29.2. So we estimate that last digit to be a 1. So when we write down our number, it's 29.21. Now again, that decimal place, that area of uncertainty, is going to depend on the apparatus that you're using. If something measures in milliliters, you want to go and measure uh, you want to estimate that tenths place. So instead of just 40 milliliters, maybe it's somewhere in between, you'd say 40.3 milliliters or 40.6 milliliters. So remember, we measure and we always go one digit beyond what we can most accurately measure using that device. Now when we determine, when we're given a number and we're looking at the number of significant digits, these are the rules that we use. So any non-zero numbers are significant. Okay? So any number that is not a zero is considered a significant digit. So if I look at the number 44.7, the first four, the second four, and the seven are all significant because they are non-zero digits. Any zeros between non-zero digits are significant. So if I look at the number, I have 40.7. The four is significant, the seven is significant, and because the zero falls between two significant figures, the zero is significant. So we say that that has three significant figures. Any zeros that are in front of non-zero digits are not significant. So 0 0.078 only contains two significant figures. The first two zeros are not significant, and we'll dive into more of that when we talk about scientific notation. And then lastly, Zeros at the end of non-zero digits are only significant if there is a decimal point. So the example there, if you notice, all three of those numbers are represent the same value, but they have different significant digits. So for example, that first one there, 4,000, only has one significant figure or digit. That, the reason for that is that 4,000 could be an estimate of anywhere, you know, if it's something's 3,500 and we round up, then it's 4,000. So it's not very accurate measurement. But if I have a decimal place after it, then all four of those digits are significant, which is that stating that I have exactly 4,000 of that particular unit. Same thing with the one below. If I have 4,000.00, that is saying that I have exactly 4,000.00. Now, anything beyond that is considered unknown or non-significant. So you have to understand how the decimal place plays a role in here. So those are the four rules to figuring out significant figures or digits. We'll get some practice with this a little bit later on. So let's take a look here and determine the number of significant figures in the following numbers. First one is 34.5 grams. Well, all of those digits are non-zero digits, so this would be three significant figures. 30.07 meters. 
we have two zeros that are in between two non-zero digits, so this will have four significant figures. 0 0.000327 moles. If you remember, zeros preceding non-zero digits are not significant, so this has three significant figures. 4,900 kilograms with no decimal point. Because there is no decimal point, the trailing zeros are not significant, so this only has two significant figures. 4,900 with the decimal point, because the decimal point is there, that's saying we have exactly 4,900 liters. Therefore, this has four significant figures. Now, this one's a little bit tricky. We have three zeros that precede and then two zeros after. We do have a decimal point. So the preceding zeros, or the, the zeros in front, do not count, but the zeros after do count. So this one has five significant figures, three, four, five, and the last two zeros. We'll continue to get some more practice with this later on in class. All right, so when we're doing with functions with significant digits, we need to follow a couple of different rules. When adding or subtracting, the answer should be the same as the fewest number of digits to the right of the decimal in the problem. So we're not really looking at significant digits or figures here. So when we add 32.1 grams to 2.45 grams, we get our answer, and we need to figure out what we're going to round to. Well, the first number only goes one decimal point beyond the decimal. The second one goes two decimal points, so our answer is only going to go one decimal point beyond that. Again, we're looking for the fewest number of digits to the right of the decimal. The first number has one unit to the right of the decimal, sorry, one digit to the right of the decimal, and the second one has two, so our answer should have one. When multiplying or dividing, the answer should be in the fewest number of significant digits in the problem. So if we look at the problem down below, 3.24 grams divided by 2.567 milliliters, the first number has three significant figures, and the second one has four significant figures. Therefore, our answer needs to be with three significant figures. So as a result, the answer is 1.26 grams per milliliter. Always make sure you include your units with your answer. That's something that's very important in chemistry class. So again, when we're adding and subtracting, it's the fewest number of digits to the right of the decimal. And we're multiplying or dividing, it's the fewest number of significant digits in the problem. Let's solve the following calculation with the correct number of significant figures. So we've got 10.67 centimeters, and we're subtracting 3.8465 centimeters here. Well, the first thing we need to do is determine what rules we're going to follow. Since we are subtracting, we need to look at the number of digits to the right of the decimal point. And that is going to indicate how many digits to the right of the decimal point our answer should have. So with 10.67, we have two digits to the right of the decimal, and here we have four. So we need to keep in mind that our answer is going to have two digits to the right of the decimal point. Simple enough, we just get out our calculator. I'm using my phone. Don't use your phone in class. We'll provide you with some calculators. You bring in a TI-30, TI-80, whatever. Now the answer is six point. Eight, two, three, five centimeters. But if you remember, we're only going to use two numbers to the right of the decimal. So we need to figure out if we're going to round that last number up or down. Since it's three, five, we're going to round down six point eight two centimeters, meters, and that is our answer. Okay. Simple enough, right? So again, we just look at the which one has the least number of digits to the right of the decimal point, and we solve. Pretty straightforward, guys. Let's go to one more practice problem before we're done for the day. So again, as we go through these problems, it's important for us to remember the rules of significant figures or digits. Uh, we're going to solve this following calculation with the correct number of significant figures, 3.22 meters times 34.78 meters. Well, remember when we're multiplying or dividing, Whichever number we use in the calculation that has the least number of significant figures is going to be how many significant figures our answer is going to be. So with 3.22, we have three significant figures here. 34.78, we have four. Therefore, our answer is going to need to be in three significant figures. So again, we get out our trusty calculator and we solve. And when we do our math, we're going to get 111 point nine nine one six 
And since we're multiplying, we haven't really talked a lot about this, but since we're multiplying two similar units, m times m, if you think about it algebraically, it's essentially m squared, right? So our unit here is meters squared. Now, if you remember, we have three significant figures, so our answer needs to have three significant figures. So those first three would be significant. Looking at this number, we're going to round up. So our answer is going to be 112. And you can, with this one, you can include the decimal point or not have the decimal point. I like to include the decimal point. That lets people know that's exactly 112. Uh, but that's going to be 112 meters squared. And there's your answer. Okay. So the, the math is just this, is still the same. The only thing that's different here is we're looking at digits of uncertainty and utilizing that to help us come up with correct answers in terms of how many digits we should use. Now these are going to apply to every single math problem that you do from here on out for the rest of the school year. So you need to make sure that you know these and know how to do these well. So long story short, we've talked a lot about significant figures today. And these are measured to be the exact level of uncertainty plus one estimated digit. So if you're measuring something, determine where on the apparatus you can most accurately measure, and then go one decimal place beyond that. Estimate that last digit. When you add or subtract, the answer should be the same as the fewest number of digits to the right of the decimal in the problem. And then when multiplying or dividing, it should be the fewest number of significant digits in the problem. Hopefully this makes sense to you guys. I don't have any extra questions for you today. We are going to spend some time in class working on this. So hopefully you have a pretty good understanding of it. And we'll see you guys next time. Have a good day, guys. Bye-bye.